What you guys got another video here for you is overclocking worth it? That's the question I get quite a lot and I see a hell of a lot of debates online about overclocking. To overclock or not to overclock? Overclocking isn't really for everyone. You're going to get enthusiasts claiming it's best to overclock and you're going to get others that say it's not really worth it. And you're going to get a lot of people that say overclocking gives a system boost and improves performance. So you're going to get more frames. You're going to get overclocking your CPU, overclocking your GPU, overclocking your RAM. And then you've got even overclocking monitors to a fact of, say, for instance, from 60 hertz to 75 hertz. There's people that will overclock just because they can. But what can you actually achieve from it in the modern day? So it depends on your hardware and the amount of overclock uh, that you want to apply to it. So, for instance, a mild overclock is something that we would call, say, for instance, 100 to 200 uh, megahertz, which isn't a lot. And uh, really what you're going to see there is no noticeable performance increase whatsoever. But on the other end, you're going to get overclockers that will say, I've got an old i7 and uh, basically I've overclocked it from 3.2 uh, gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz and they will see a much bigger performance increase. And that might be so. But modern day processors like Ryzen and Intel, some of the higher end stuff is pretty fast already. So what are you expecting to get out of it? So, for instance, if you've got a Ryzen 3600, like you're seeing here, where I'm overclocking it, basically what you're going to see is, you know, a pretty fast processor already. Now, some people might say, well, what's the point of overclocking? If you overclock it, what do you expect to get out of it? If you wanted a faster processor, why didn't you buy a faster processor in the first place? Some people like to try to squeeze every inch of power out of that CPU to get the most performance out of it. And again, if you're one of those people that only have a PC for around about 18 months to two years and you start building a new one, then why not overclock? I mean, you're not going to have the PC that long to even see any problems and you're just going to buy a new one. Whereas some people are not in that position. Some people will literally buy a computer and expect to have that computer six to eight years and they don't uh, build new computers all the time so overclocking it uh, might shorten the life of that hardware now you're going to get people that say it doesn't but the people that normally say it doesn't shorten the life is the people that are in the i have a pc for 18 months to two years and they never really see any problems you'll also get people like say for instance big youtubers like jay's two cents and bitwit and other types of people like that that get loads of hardware sent to them for free and it really doesn't matter what they do with their hardware because they'll always have the latest and greatest stuff sent to them by manufacturers who want to get, uh, say, for instance, promotion or free advertisement from those uh, YouTubers. So it just comes down to really where you're situated on the whole thing. So let's take a look at the pros and the cons for overclocking, some of the uh, things that you'll need to overclock and some of the disadvantages of overclocking as well. Now, for most people, as I've said, the CPU, when you buy them, are pretty powerful already. And all you're going to do is squeeze out a few extra megahertz or in some cases on some processors. Some people get much better overclocks with their CPUs because of the silicone lottery. And they end up with a really decent processor that they can really overclock and push. So let's talk about uh, what you need to overclock. You're going to need plenty good cooling in your system to keep uh, cooling uh, down on the CPU and the hardware in there because as soon as you start overclocking you're going to get the temperatures kicking up a lot more higher so you're also going to need to have an unlocked CPU so you can overclock it normally the K versions or Ryzen processors you can overclock them also you're going to need to have good hardware i.e. a decent power supply that can help uh, deliver good power uh, to that overclock also a decent heat sink. You can use stock heat sinks in some cases, but if you're looking to push it really, really far, you're going to need to get a decent heat sink. Also having a decent motherboard. 
Now, a lot of motherboards allow you to overclock. Some don't. But if you've got a really good motherboard that's got good VRMs, that's got good thermals and good cooling, then you can obviously get a much more stable overclock and a much more higher overclock on there. You're also going to need software to actually test your overclocks. And what I mean by testing is software to help test your PC to make sure it's stable and it's not crashing. And there's a lot of different types of uh, software out there that you can use to do this. Now, of course, everyone's going to have their own favorites, but really, you really want to uh, use software like, say, for instance, Cinebench to get a, a valid score of what you're trying to achieve. And then you can use other uh, software like TimeSpy, which will test the CPU. Then you've got Prime95, which will also do further testing on the CPU and memory and other types of hardware on your PC. You've got Blender, which you can run. And you've also got other software like uh, CPU-Z and uh and also monitoring software that will actually monitor the temperatures of the hardware inside your system to make sure you're not going above what it's recommended for that particular piece of hardware. Now, of course, there is disadvantages to overclocking, and this is going to be debatable because like all overclocking topics, they're heavily debatable on whoever you're talking to. So, for instance, you're going to get higher temperatures. That is literally because you're putting more voltage through the hardware in your computer. And of course, that will start to rise the temperatures. Now, more voltage can sometimes allow you to get higher clock speeds. But then again, uh, the side effect is higher temperatures. It's like you uh, going for a run and running at full speed as fast as you can go. You can only do it for so long before your body will start to shut down. You'll start to sweat heavily get red faced and your heart rate will go right up and you will have to come back down to a, a slower speed because otherwise you're going to end up with a massive heart attack. And that's just like your PC. It's going to push it to its maximum performance before it falls over and collapses and then it will shut down. You'll get a blue screen and that means you've pushed it too far. Now, reducing the lifespan of that hardware is another debatable topic. People will argue to the cows come home that it doesn't damage the hardware at all. And it will if it's not done correctly. And again, if you're pushing too much voltage for long periods through that hardware and you're pushing it beyond its capabilities for long periods and doing a heavy overclock, you're going to literally reduce the life cycle of that hardware. Now, don't get confused with overclocking that is stable and in the safety realms of that hardware. And you can do that for quite a long period without really causing major harm to the hardware if you've got good quality uh, hardware that you're using in your system. But if you're doing benchmarks and scores and bragging rights and posting these on the Internet, most of those uh, scores that you're seeing there are what we would say a one time overclock just to see how far they can push their hardware and they will step it back. It's like racing your car down the road. You're not going to go flat out all the time because your engine will eventually uh, give up. You know what I mean? So you don't want to be doing that with your hardware. You want to just put your post, your scores up. There's nothing wrong with doing a good overclock for the maximum you can do and then bragging about it and posting your screenshots and your your temperatures and all your other bits up on the internet. As long as once you've done that, you've set profiles for your overclocks and go back to a much more stable, safer overclock, which you can run for longer periods of time without the fear of killing your hardware. You've got to remember, as you start going up to the maximum ragged edge of that hardware, you will see the temperatures getting up dangerously close to its maximum thermal temperatures that the CPU can handle before you'll start getting thermal throttling and shutting down and all sorts of problems. So once you're at that point, you want to step it right back and come into a much more safer area. Also, there's a possibility that you're going to avoid your warranty by overclocking. That's another thing you need to take into account when you're doing these types of things, especially if the hardware dies and you send it back for RMA and they say this has been overclocked too far and it's been damaged and they might not give you your money back. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. Now, the way I look at it is this. If you're looking to uh, buy a cheap processor and squeeze every ounce of power out of that to try and 
save yourself some money to perform your system better than what you could if you upgraded to a higher end CPU, then you're going to be sadly disappointed because there's no way on this earth that companies like Ryzen, Nvidia, AMD, or, or any of those companies are going to give you, you know, the ability to outclock a higher end CPU. It's just not going to happen. And if you do, that means you're heavily overclocking that hardware and it's going to literally shorten the life of that hardware by doing that. Surely the sensible thing would be just to go and buy a much more better GPU. You can see here this Ryzen 3600 is now at 4.5 gigahertz. And again, I didn't get a crash. I run Cinebench, I run um, Prime 95, run a bunch of other settings on here but you'll see the temperatures will start to climb and that's what generally happens when you overclock you start getting higher temps and uh, they start to get into the 80s now so this is where you'll start to get into the danger zone uh, and then it'll start getting instabilities and it'll start crashing now the chip here now is at 4.5 gigahertz and of course the temperature started to fluctuate towards 84 celsius when running cinebench 2.0 now, of course, I would have to then run uh, Prime 95 and then I'd have to run a bunch of other software to make sure this system was stable. But it didn't crash through Cinebench, which is a good sign. And again, I would have to run other software to see whether that would be more stable. Now, of course, at the end of the day, this is not a tutorial on how to overclock. Uh, this was just me messing around and just seeing how far I could go before I started getting crashing. And to be honest, I think this is a pretty decent chip. If I was to mess around with this chip pretty good, I reckon I could get some really good overclocks with it because I think it's a pretty good processor. But saying that, I would not leave it at 4.5 gigahertz. You can see the score here is pretty beefy. And I wouldn't leave it at there because, to be honest, it's just a little bit higher than what I would want that system to run on a daily basis. So literally, I will unclock this and leave it at stock because I'm not really bothered about overclocking the processor but you can see we got to 4.5 and also we got to core voltage of 1.360 now for those that are interested in it i did run a prime 95 for a period of time and had no problems whatsoever i did run um the cinebench 2.0 as you see in the video and i had no problems there and i run time spy on the cpu and lucky for me the system was stable and it didn't crash although the temperatures started to get towards 84 Celsius, which was uh, pretty toasty. So other than that, I've stepped it back down and I've gone back to normal. You can see the voltage there was at 1.360. I didn't go any higher than that. That's as high as I wanted it to go. I'd be interested to know what your guys' thoughts are on overclocking. Let me know in the comments section below what you think about overclocking and whether it's worth it. And maybe put some specs up there so I can actually see them. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from briotechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.